KTAM is a very interesting niche practice in the law. The KTAM provisions start in the 1800s during the Civil War. President Abraham Lincoln was getting his army requisitions were getting ripped off and he was buying things that were not coming through once he bought them. So for instance, the Union Army would pay for uh, rifles and instead of getting a thousand rifles, they would get a hundred rifles and they wouldn't work. And so they wanted to figure out a way of making sure that what they were purchasing, they were getting the value for what they were trying to buy. Uh, they created a reward system and KITAM is short for a Latin phrase. That Latin phrase means he who sues on behalf of the king sues for himself as well. Uh, in other words, if you as someone who knows that this deal is going through and also knows that the person doing business with the government is going to rip off the government, if you turn them in, commonly called a whistleblower, if you whistleblow on them, that you will be included in part of the savings or reward or recovery that the government gains in that transaction. So in today's environment, uh, fraud schemes are incredibly complex. But here's a very simple example. Uh, Corporation A uh, makes a deal with the government to sell them a million paper clips a month. And that works for a couple of months, but Corporation A realizes that no one on the government's end is trying to count the paper clips or do anything to make sure they're getting their million dollars of paper clips. Instead, they decide, you know what, we're going to send them 900,000 paper clips a month. Since no one's counting, they're getting away with 10% of the deal. Then they do 800,000, and that works for five years. Now, five years go by of ripping off the government 20% on that contract until somebody in the company finds out. And when they do, and they look back and they realize that millions of dollars of unpurchased paper clips have never been sent to the government, they can tell the government about that. And when the government recovers, they can recover with the government. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen easily. Number one, the, complex, the, the schemes are very complex, so you need paperwork, documentation, etc. Number two, the government is very apt to listen to you and then in the end, if you're not properly secured in your claim, the government may not uh, allow you to keep that claim and will not give you your 15 to 30 percent of the money. So people need an attorney to represent them in going to the government and the people they should hire for that job are people with governmental prosecutorial experience. You would want somebody who understands how the government works. I'm a past prosecutor of the Justice Department. My wife is a past prosecutor of the State Attorney's Office. And we all have the experience to bring those claims to the prosecutor in a format that they understand, in a significant, organized fashion, so that the person who gives them the claim, the uh, professional name for that is a relator. The relator secures their claim so that they can then recover in the end. It's a long and arduous process. It can uh, be risky for the relator. They have to be willing to go out and do these things. But uh, usually, if they have a really valid claim, it can be extremely, extremely lucrative.